Welcome back. So now we're going to talk about how you can use the singular value decomposition to compute the principal component analysis, or PCA. PCA is the bedrock dimensionality reduction technique for probability and statistics, and it's still very, very commonly used in data science and machine learning applications when you have big data. Uh, that might have some statistical distribution, and you want to uncover the low dimensional patterns to build models off of it. PCA has been around for a long time, since 1901 uh, Pearson paper. Okay, so it's a really, really old method, very well established, ton of theory uh, about the statistics of this. And I'm going to essentially pigeonhole this as what we're gonna call the statistical interpretation interpretation of the SVD. And principal component analysis is in particular going to provide us with a data-driven hierarchical coordinate system. So it gives us a hierarchical, higher, that's not how you spell hierarchical, a hierarchical coordinate system, hierarchical coordinate system, based on data to represent the statistical variations in your data set. Okay, so it's a coordinate system uh, based in terms of, of directions in your data that capture the maximum amounts of the variance in your data, okay? And so I'm going to, uh, the notation here is gonna be a little different than what we're used to, and that's because the PCA literature and the SVD literature have kind of different conventions about what the matrix looks like. So in the PCA literature, we still have a data matrix X, uh, and it still has a bunch of measurements from experiments, uh, independent experiments. But here, we're going to represent those independent experiments as big row vectors, x1, x2, and so on and so forth, okay? So each, uh, each row vector x are essentially measurements from a single experiment, measurements from a single uh, experiment, and what we're hoping is that these are kind of individual experiments. So this measurement might be uh, the demographic information from a specific human, you know, age, weight, sex, race, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then X1 would be person one, X2 is person two, and so on and so forth. So the same basic idea as before with our data matrix X, except now instead of columns having the information for a specific individual, kind of that, that measurement from a single experiment, now we're gonna have those be rows. And that's because that's consistent with the PCA literature. So I just wanna show you how it looks this way, okay? And the idea here is that we're going to try to find, and we're going to assume that this data X has some statistical distribution. It's not deterministic. There is some statistical variability uh, to this information. And we're gonna try to uncover the dominant uh, kind of combinations of features that, that describe as much of the data as possible. Okay, so we're gonna do it using the SVD, but we're gonna write it a little bit differently. Okay, so because this is the statistical interpretation of the SVD, uh, there's a few steps that are extra that we don't normally do with SVD that we're gonna do here. So uh, kind of step one in this procedure is that we're gonna compute the mean, the row-wise mean, the average row. So we're gonna compute uh, the mean row, and we're just gonna call this x bar equals one over, I'm gonna say that I still have n rows, one over n uh, sum of each of these x j's from j equals one to n, okay? So this is the average row, I just average all of the rows. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to build an average matrix. So the average matrix is gonna be obtained by taking a vector of ones and multiplying it by that x bar vector, okay? So I just literally create n copies of x bar and that's my x bar average matrix. And so step two is I'm going to subtract the mean from my data matrix. Okay, so I'm going to subtract the mean. So now I have B 
equals x minus x bar. And the way we say this in, in PCA language is that this is the mean centered data. So if I have some distribution of data um, where there's some you know, average value to all of this, when I subtract that out, it brings everything down so that the center of my distribution is at the origin. Okay? So we're going to be modeling this data matrix X assuming that it is a zero mean uh, Gaussian. And so this is where we, we subtract off the mean so that it's, it's zero mean. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to compute the covariance matrix of this mean center data. So the covariance matrix. Again, this is kind of just the correlation matrix from the SVD, but we're calling it a covariance matrix in this context. So the covariance matrix of the rows of B, and we're going to call that matrix C. C is equal to B transpose B. Okay, good. So at this point, all we've done is essentially take our data matrix. We've written it in a transpose from how we normally do it. We've subtracted off the mean, and we've computed this correlation matrix or this covariance matrix. So this looks a lot like the X transpose X from before, uh, but we've subtracted off the mean. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compute the eigenvectors, the leading eigenvectors of this correlation matrix. And that's going to be related both to the singular vectors of X and also to its principal components. Okay? Uh, and I'm going to try my best to get the notation and the terminology correct. Uh, again, this is in section uh, 1.5 in our book, so you can go there uh, to refer for more details. Good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to compute the eigen decomposition. We're going to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, uh, so the eigs of C. And in particular, we're going to compute, uh, for example, let's call it um, V1 transpose B transpose B V1. That would be the biggest eigenvector of this matrix B transpose B is V1. Then I would compute V2, then V3, then V4, and so on and so forth, just like in the SVD. And there's corresponding eigenvalues just like in the SVD. And essentially what we're going to get is this matrix C times V equals V times D, where these are my eigenvalues and these are my eigenvectors. Okay, good. So all we've done is we've computed the singular, sorry, the eigenvalue decomposition of this covariance matrix. Now you could actually compute it using the SVD. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and you get these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And here's where the principal components come in. So if I take this matrix T, which is equal to my, uh, my mean subtracted data B, times these eigenvectors V, these are called my principal components. These are my principal components. Okay, principal components. And this vector V of these eigenvectors are called the loadings. So essentially what you do is you decompose this matrix into uh, kind of directions of maximal variance, just like in the singular value decomposition. Uh, called the principal components. And the loadings are kind of how much of each of those principal components uh, each, of, each of the experiments has, the loadings in a particular experiment of those principal component uh, columns. Okay, And oftentimes in terms of the singular value decomposition language, so let's say x was equal to u sigma v transpose here, then what we would say is that t is simply equal to u times sigma, okay? You, because, and if I write b as, sorry, I should be a little bit more careful. If I took the singular value decomposition of the mean subtracted data, b equals u sigma v transpose, then t would be either b times v, and b times v is simply u times sigma, okay? So these are also, a representation of the principal components.
Okay, so you can get the principal components and the loadings directly from the SVD of the mean subtracted data. I guess that's the headline here, is that this very important statistical representation of your data can be achieved just by computing the SVD of your mean subtracted data. It's the same as finding these eigenvectors of the covariance matrix, uh, which is what you would kind of do in the classical principal component analysis. Good. Okay. Now, what's also important is these eigenvalues here, or the singular values in sigma, give you an indication of the amount of the variance of this data set that these principal components capture, or these loadings capture. So if I only want to describe this high dimensional data in terms of the first two principal components, or the, uh, and the first two vectors of loadings, I would be able to compute how much of the variance is captured by computing uh, kind of how much energy or variance is in those first two eigenvalues of this, this D matrix. And so what I could literally do, um, I want to make sure I'm being careful here, these eigenvalues lambda are equal to the square of the singular values, and it's literally equal to the variance of that principal component in the data. And so if I want to know how much variance is being captured in the first, let's say, R modes, I would take the sum from k equals 1 to r of lambda k divided by the sum of all n of my lambdas. So I would basically see how, what's the fraction of variance captured by my first r lambdas divided by the total of all of my eigenvalues, all of the variance in the data. And so, for example, I might decide to keep only as many principal components as are needed to explain 95% of the variance. And so that would give you a criterion for how many principal components to keep. Okay, again, we're going to code this up. Uh, I'm actually going to create a couple of data matrices, real data matrices uh, that have distributions. One of them will be a random data matrix. Another one will be a data matrix uh, consisting of genetic markers for people with and without ovarian cancer. And we'll compute this principal component analysis uh, and look at the results. So I'll point out that, again, in MATLAB, it's pretty easy uh, to compute this. So it's something very simple like V uh, score and then some extra variable S2 equals PCA of uh, the B matrix. Okay, so really, really easy to compute in MATLAB, also easy to compute in R and Python, and so we'll do examples of that. Uh, the last thing I want to do is just show you a picture. So again, if I have data that is, you know, some high dimensional data, and it has some distribution, you're hoping that it has some Gaussian uh, kind of white noise distribution, or some, some normal distribution, I'm not drawing a great normal distribution here, then what the principal component analysis is going to do is it's essentially going to find these ellipsoids of maximal variance in terms of one and two and three standard deviations. So you can actually quantify, if I have a new point, how likely is it given the distribution of the old points? And not only that, but the, the, the singular value decomposition and the principal component analysis will tell you exactly what directions are account for the most variance, the second most variance, the third most variance in the data, and so on and so forth. Okay, so very useful statistical technique to build models, statistical models from your data. Okay, thank you.